Diamond Shields, Lindsey Allen, and head coach Teresa Witherspoon speak after Chicago lost to the Washington Mystics. Check out the video. Those turnovers. I know obviously Phil will probably show what went wrong there, but just your first assessment on what you think went wrong, not being able to connect. Um, I think for us, uh, we just got a bit rattled. Um, they came out and pressured the ball. They were aggressive. They were assertive. They were the aggressors. And the game usually favors the aggressors. Um, and we were just talking with the ball, which is unacceptable. Um, so we just have to be better. I think it starts with me as a point guard. I have to take care of the ball better to start the game. Um, and then it kind of spirals from there. But, um, yeah, we were just doing this with it tonight. And then what did you, Lindsay or Diamond, what did you guys see on that last offensive possession with 30 seconds left? Um, we were trying to get the ball into the post uh, with Nick because she had a smaller guard on her. Um, but the communication just wasn't there. I think it's loud. Um, I'm under the weather, so I'm losing my voice. So I'm trying to talk. So we're just trying to talk from the sideline. Um, so we just couldn't get that communication. And then we're just trying to make something happen from there, like ball screen stuff. Uh, Try to get downhill, um, just not enough time. We'll go to Steven, questions for players only. And hey, two quick questions for Lindsay. So it really feels like you've been kind of feeling your way out in terms of scoring with the starting group on the court. Can you just kind of speak to what you're seeing and how you're finding your spots with that group? Um, I think our bigs do a good job of setting screens and rolling hard. Um, and so from there, I'm just able to read the ball screens, you know, whether I have um, the pocket pass to the post or whether it's uh, a jump shot for me. Um, but just kind of trying to read the defense, you know, get the defense playing rotation, get them playing in closeouts. That's when we're at our best. That's when everything's at their best, honestly. So if we can keep doing that, um, get the ball into the post, they get doubled, they kick it out, we swing it, swing, swing, whatever. Um, just keep that in our offense. Kind of that's how we've been successful. That's how I've been successful. Now, can you speak to what you've been saying from uh, when Kayla was the starting group? I mean, she had a lot of opportunities as far as cuts and post ups and quick touch passes. Like, you just got to speak to the vision that she brought to that group. Yeah, for sure. Um, Nick just provides a lot of just everything for us. Um, she's physical, she's quick, she's strong. Um, she can guard one through four, basically. Uh, she can shoot the three. She's strong enough to take the contact and finish in contact, get into the basket. Um, so she's really able to force the issue for us, you know, when we need to get down the and get our feet uh, dirty in the paint. Um, so she's staying aggressive in that. And obviously, you know, when we get to um, our kickouts and our swing swings, you know, she's ready to shoot and she's ready to just read the game. She's a smart basketball player as well. But she's also just a great teammate. Like, she wants what's best for everyone on this team. Um, she has a kid who's scoring. She has a kid who's going on. She's going to take hard no matter what. Good, Julia. Barbara, on your right. Uh, for either of you guys, uh, four of y'all's last five games have ended in the clutch. What do you feel this team needs to do to be able to, to execute and kind of grow in those moments? Grow up. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge that you will always face, especially as a young team um, being faced with multiple opportunities. To, to come down to the clutch moments of the game and you either find ways to win those games and grow and mature as a team or you don't and you just continue to learn and get ready for the next opportunity. Growing pains suck, uh, but it's part of the process. We have a really young group. Um, and so all we can do is continue to go back to the drawing board with coach, um, learn from it, watch film, continue to develop, continue to mature. Um, you know, and, and prepare ourselves for the next opportunity because they'll continue to come and present themselves. And then Camilla tonight led the team in assists, and it seems like that high-low game with her kind of passing out of the elbow is really developing. Uh, just kind of what do either of y'all see in terms of her vision and how utilizing her at that spot can kind of open up the rest of the offense? Yeah, um, Camilla has great vision. Um, you know, it helps that she's 6'7 and can see over almost everyone, but at the same time, she's unselfish and she's willing to pass it back out and she's willing to look for the cutters and look for the high low with Angel or Izzy, whoever it might be in the game at the time. So um, she's constantly looking for it and she just trying to figure out, get a feel for the game, kind of read when she can take it one on one or when she can finish through or when, like, you know, there's a guard cutting or there's that side, uh, weak side that's open. So um, she's done a great job with that. 
Um, Diamond, when you talk about the youthfulness of this team, going back to 2018, your rookie year, that was a year you guys failed to make the playoffs. When you think about um, that hurdle going from, from that team and then the next season you guys do, what's the poise required in this moment, late in the season? Um, you have a handle on, on the final playoff spot, but, but not by much. What poise is required right now? Yeah, I mean, to your point, like, I've been there, you know, um, it sucks, you know, getting to the last few games of the season and knowing that you don't have a chance at all making playoffs. Playing those games is really hard, you know. So for us, um, I think it's all about perspective. Um, and a lot of that you don't get without experience. Um, so we're learning a lot of hard lessons right now. Um, I try to do my best as a leader to come in and try and instill that on the locker room and on the team. Um, but again, some of that has to be learned through experience. My hope is that we can get a grasp on it now um, and continue to make a playoff push because we really do have a special group and I really do believe in what we're capable of if we do get to match up with some teams in the playoffs and it could be really exciting. Um, but we have to we have to figure it out now. We've got third row on your left, Danny. <clears throat> hey, Diamond. Uh... Despite the loss, you guys as a team looked really good offensively during stretches. Overall, as a team, you shot above average on what you have in the season. Three-pointers were significantly above average, and you yourself shot your highest season efficiency. With how good the offense has looked at stretches, what can you attribute to just being on the same page there, and how do you kind of put that into the offense when it's maybe looking a little more lackluster? Yeah, I mean, um, I just, you know, I found myself in a position throughout the year just trying to take advantage of the opportunities that are given. Um, you know, sometimes it's on the defensive end where I have to be more assertive. Um, and tonight it was on the offensive end a bit more with Kenny out. Um, you know, so just trying to do what the team needs from me, honestly. Um, you know, I've, I've been working on my game. I've been in the gym, um, you know, and uh, I'm still very confident in who I am as a player. Um, so any opportunity I get to go out there and show that, you know, I'm just trying to make use of it. Any more players? Mike. This question for Diamond. Um, obviously, during the championship season just a few years ago, you know the team wasn't in the greatest position either during the regular season. So, how have you been able to vocalize the importance of like every game matters and just not giving up till the end? Yeah, I mean, again, perspective. I've been there, um, but sometimes you got to go through it to understand. Um, and again, we're feeling that right now. Um, we have a young group that really wants to win. Um, but winning in this league is something you have to learn how to do and something that you have to care about and sacrifice for each and every day. Um, and yeah, so just trying to get us to rally around those themes um, so that we can continue to make progress. Um, it doesn't happen in one season. It takes time. Um, we're, we're right at the beginning of, of something that could be really special. Um, and again, some really hard lessons are being learned early on, which is preferred. Um, but I still believe in this group and, and our ability to, to get into the playoffs, and that's what we're striving for right now. Thank you, players. Great question, Coach. Uh, just can you kind of speak to what you've been seeing? I know we talked about Michaela a uh, few times this season. You spoke to the inspirations and how she really just kind of uh, came on and aggressive. Uh, Thank you for being really able to kind of get us into the game today. Michaela? Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, she's, uh, she's been playing well. She's been putting a lot of work to uh, come in and do the things that we're asking her to do offensively and defensively. Uh, I said this from day one. She's probably our most versatile basketball player due to what she can bring to us on this on the floor. Uh, she's just taking full advantage of what she can do. She can put the ball on the floor, she can get to the rim, she can post up, uh, she can defend, she does a lot of things for us that is keeping us in this race. Uh, it's just really good to see her play with a tremendous amount of confidence. You know, with Camila, um, I always talk about how versatile she is and how it's kind of underrated on the offensive side. Um, Julius was their leading team in the Can you just speak to her ability to really connect things and kind of play out the attention that she sees from her? Well, Camilla sees the floor well. She sees the floor very well. She's a willing passer. You know, a lot of times when you punch it into bigs, everybody just thinks the big goes and scores. 
she sees what's happening, she sees what's coming at her, and she tries to make the right play. Uh, so she, she's a winning passer, and her vision is good, and she normally makes the correct play. She wants to play the game the right way. Julia, then Harley. The same thing that I asked the players, which is kind of how do you see, looking at these last four clutch games, where do you want this team to grow most in those moments? Well, there's many areas to grow from when, when you're in these moments. These are big moments to grow from. Uh, and like the uh, player says, can be some painful things that you have to go through. There's many things that you can learn from and to grow from. Uh, and film tells you a lot, especially what we do defensively and those miscues that I always talk about. And how we can't have those. How we got to have every glass board that comes off the glass. We have to have that. Crucial moments. You have to do all the little things right. How important details are. How important your scouting report is. How locked in are you on every little thing that's on the scouting report because it's done for you for a reason. It's your cheat sheet. So stay locked in on your cheat sheet. And then offensively, we're gonna say this over and over again, you cannot turn the ball over. You simply cannot turn over. Value every freaking possession. When you look at those turnovers, especially in those clutch moments, where do you think kind of, is there a through line in terms of a consistent reason why those mistakes are happening? No, no, we have to go back and see exactly why those turnovers were happening. Um, was lack of movement, lack of getting open, uh, allowing them to push us out of where we want to run our offense. Uh, so of course the ball was going in different areas and when we turn it over, they get steals, they're very good. Uh, so we knew it coming into this game, we had to value possession. And, uh, unfortunately we had 21 turnovers, not very good. Coach, just those last 90 seconds, Mystics went on a 9 0 run. I know film will show you a lot, but what are, the, what are some things that you saw outside of the turnovers that led to the downfall? Uh, just talked about it. Our defense. You know, we allowed them to get downhill, didn't switch where we should have switched. Uh, then offensively, you know, we didn't get into the office that we were trying to get into and then get into it quickly, get down to the shot clock. Uh, last eight seconds of the shot clock, we, we don't want to get there. We want to make sure. That we know exactly what we're trying to do. And uh, those last 90 seconds that you're speaking about were not our great seconds in the game. And then, how do you mentally try and keep the team together, especially after these four losses that have just come in the last few seconds? And that can sometimes cause players to start to get in their emotions a little bit. But how do you try and maintain their mentality as strong yeah. to end the season? Well, even in the locker room, the next thing I say is we can now go back to the board. You gotta always go back, and you gotta go back with the amount of confidence that you walk in here every day with. Um, some of it can hurt. Yeah, it, it really does. If you love the game enough, it hurts. It freaking hurts. And when you love it enough, you know I gotta get back to the to the drawing board. We gotta come back better. That's the way our mentality is. We're not down and out. Yeah, we are not happy we didn't win. We're not down and out. It's not over for us unless we say so. So it's not. Coach, Rachel started tonight again, uh, only put up two shots. I know, you know, offense is kind of, can kind of go either way at any certain point in time in any game. Should we expect to see some more shots from her? I know you would definitely run a lot of offensive sets for her and a lot of others on the team. Definitely. Uh, we have to have her ability to score. She can score the ball. She can shoot the ball. And we need that. We need that in order for us to stretch our, stretch the defense a little bit to even leave the lane over for our bigs to be able to go to work. Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking to get her more shots, open shots, open looks, uh, so she can really gain her confidence because she never lacks it at all. But when that ball goes in for you quite a bit and you get some touches and you can see the rim, it means a lot. So we want to get her more involved because it's going to help us to be more successful. Thank you. Any more for Coach? Second row on your left. Um, there's been a lot of talk tonight about uh, Camilla's assist, but she only took four shots and I'm wondering, what is your feeling about her overall kind of like offensive profile tonight? Uh, she's playing well. Do I want her to shoot more? Absolutely. You hear me telling that all the time. Dominate the paint, Neil. Dominate the paint. Because I don't think there's very many people who can defend her when she decides she wants to dominate the paint. So I would like her to shoot the ball a little bit more down there. Be a little more aggressive. She's doing a hell of a job for us. I believe that. Go back to Julia. On Camilla, we spoke with her pregame and she talked about how she felt like she was playing a little bit almost scared the first three weeks that she came back from that shoulder injury. How do you work with her? We talk about wanting her to dominate the paint. How do you work with her on just kind of the mental side of a big getting in there and being able to physically dominate? 
occupy that space? Well, it, it's not so much that you have to work with her. You just show it to her. You show it to her because she knows. She knows how she, how uh, we need her to be successful for us down there in the paint. She gets it. But like I said earlier, she wants to play the game the right way. She doesn't want to feel like she's the one taking all the shots. But it's necessary for us to be successful down there. She gets it. She goes to school. We want that to be. Do you guys have any idea if Kennedy will be ready to go Friday? Uh, I'm sure Kennedy will be fine. She'll be fine. All right, thank you, Coach. Appreciate you, guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video, Hoop Life Family.